Welcome to Antique Sprinklers. We have a real old one for you today. What I have here is a one inch inlet uh, Buckner dual drive sprinkler from about 1938. And it's called a dual drive because it's part impact and part wedge drive. And so this one also represents a little bit of a mystery. Um, it says patent applied for on it. So that's how I can zero in on the age. And that patent was for the technology Buckner was bringing to bear for speed control on these sprinklers. And uh, that patent was applied for on the 28th of December, uh, 1937, and it was granted on May 30th, uh, 1939. So um, the odds are that this guy was produced in the, uh, in the 19, uh, 1938 range, uh, more than likely. So its actual model number is a mystery, and I might have to show a better picture of this. Uh, at the factory, they ground off the first two um, digits on the item number and replaced them with a three and a five, and left the last two, which were the eight two. And uh, the reason they did that, it actually tells the story of how I ended up uh, getting this thing. So, uh, so it uh, on eBay uh, a while back, I saw what appeared to be a very old rainmobile on it, and the rainmobile is another 1930s, um, in, you know, um, development from Buckner. They uh, I think they patented that thing around 1935. And uh, this, the Rainmobile had an item number of 3582. Now, those of you who know Buckner know that for most of the time they were making that, the model number was 190. And they made a smaller version that I think was the 180, maybe the 185. So anyhow, um, I was intrigued by that, that it was a 3582. Uh, the the nameplate on it was a, a piece of brass that had been um, molded and embossed, you know, stamped. And, uh, and so that wasn't what I expected from a rainmobile either. But then sitting on top of it was an old dual drive and, and a good size dual drive as well. They made these things uh, in half, three quarter and, and, and one inch, and they made a, a part circle and a full circle. And so uh, I started looking into the background of the rainmobile, found out when it, was, when it was patented by Buckner, when they started putting it into production, got my hands on an old uh, catalog sheet through a friend uh, that showed uh, in the 1940s a, a rainmobile with with this sprinkler on it, and so uh, so then uh, I, I I decided to uh, to take the leap and I bought the thing. It was in pretty rough shape, but I have a friend out in Fresno who uh, worked for Buckner and who makes rain coaches and can repair old rainmobiles. And he looked at the pictures and felt like everything was there other than one wand that he can manufacture. And so uh, so long story short, I bought it and send it to him, or I'm in the process of sending it to him to get rebuilt. Sometime in the next year, we might see that thing again. Who knows? Anyway, he asked me to take the sprinkler off because he didn't want to lose it, especially when I said I would have paid for the sprinkler what I paid for the whole rainmobile. So I feel like I can't really lose uh, at this point. So I got the sprinkler off. I started looking at it more closely and uh, trying to narrow in on a date for it. And that patent statement on it uh, is the thing that really is the smoking gun. Uh, it also has their patented sand bearing. Uh, these could come with a sand bearing or a plain bearing. And, uh, and this one has the sand bearing. It's beefier and more protective of the, the spindle inside of it to keep it from uh, having grit um, get in the way of its, its uh, rotation. When, uh, when I first cleaned it up and, and ran it, it ran incredibly fast. And, um, you know, barely got out, traveled out of the stream. Of, of the water. I should say when I got it, it was, it was completely clogged with gunk inside. Got that all cleaned out. It does have an interesting um, diffuser that is built into the, the tube part of the body here. Uh, it's basically two pieces of metal that create kind of a vein. But instead of being a stream straightener where it brings the stream together, this disperses the stream as it's leaving the sprinkler. And so it's almost like having a diffuser pin turned in on it. It's kind of cool looking. You'll see when we, when we uh, show it in operation. So. So I ran it and the thing's barely getting out of the stream and I, I hadn't wanted to force the top off of it, but uh, I finally decided that that was the only way I was gonna be able to see what was going on. And this will also show us a little bit about speed control on these things and how you can get them to operate at different pressures. So the cap on these guys, which also makes a real nice frost cap, unscrews. And then inside here, and I have a picture that I took of it and you can't really see it probably on the camera, but there's a post running perpendicular through the fulcrum pin. And then this sort of like crown shaped inverted crown that's bronze that the spring is um, looped through 
uh, has these little cleats off of it. And with by turning those and slipping them over that post that I would just was mentioning, um, you can change the tension on the spring and change the the speed at which it rotates. And so I turn that thing back out, and you'll see how uh, how much um, more travel the lever has in it when I uh, when I really reduce the tension. And so uh, so that's really the one of the hallmarks of these sprinklers is the ability to change the tension in that spring, and thereby the speed of rotation you know, the pressures at which it'll operate, things of that nature. The wedge always helps these guys turn. So you can, you can use these in some pretty rough circumstances and, and they're gonna be perfectly fine. So that leads me to the question that is left in my mind. And that is, what is the item number for this? So I have a handful of dual drive sprinklers. This is the only full circle one I have that uh, is single nozzle. The rest of them are dual opposing nozzles. So that was a clue. And uh, this is the only one from, it's not the only one from that era. I have another one that's also 1938. Um, but these were essentially Buckner's impact sprinklers then. You know, Rainbird had just patented their impact sprinkler. And so for Buckner to be going to market, they had to have something a little bit different. And, you know, they had a heck of a head start. By the time Rainbird had been selling their, their impacts there to growers in Southern California for a few years, you know, Buckner had been... Um, dominating you know the turf market with their their cam rotors for over a decade they'd been selling their turf king above ground sprinklers for you know uh, almost 20 years by then and they were incredibly popular and their quick couplers were, were doing very well as that sort of hoseless system that you know was first installed uh, at Pebble Beach and uh, so they had a, a massive head start and I'm sure they saw Rainbird doing well and uh, also wanted to get a piece of that ag market and so they, uh, so they came up with these dual drives that were, you know, not violating the Rainbird uh, patent, uh, and had a wedge drive on them, had uh, speed adjustment, so you know, feature rich, very heavy construction. This thing weighs a ton, and uh, then you know, put their innovation into the bearing so that these guys would uh, work well in in less than ideal conditions. And uh, so, as I was mentioned, it's a single nozzle full circle. They also made these guys in a part circle and they're really wild. Uh, I, I might show a little bit of footage of a, a smaller version uh, in the way it operates as part of this. Just it's, it's so cool. And then eventually I'm going to do a whole video on the dual drive lines and see if I can get some help from a, another collector to round out, you know, the, what I have to show for it. But anyhow, so like I said, for the fourth time now, probably that this, this is a single nozzle full circle. And so I started looking at the only literature I have from the time and uh, saw that uh, the single nozzle full circle versions of the dual drives started with a 2.9. And, uh, and I'm gonna say 2.9 instead of 2.7 because that was another option. But the 2.7 had a plain bearing, this has a sand bearing on it. So I'm fairly certain this was a 2.9. Unfortunately, the, uh, the catalog sheet I had a, a picture of stops at the size below this size. And so I think this is probably a standard size, not the junior or the sub-junior, of a, uh, the 2900 series dual drive. And therefore its actual model number is a standalone sprinkler. It's probably 2982. If you have uh, Buckner catalogs from between say 1938 and 1945 uh, that show this thing in it, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's a big gap I have in, in, in my knowledge of the product line, and it's only through bits and pieces that I can kind of pull stuff together for it. But, uh, but that's it. I, I, this one was aimed at the turf market by being placed on top of a rain coach, and, uh, and those rain coaches are used, in my experience anyway, most frequently like on a football field or some other large athletic uh, turf situation, and there you just run the hose out and, and you, you draw the cable out and you, you let, plant a stake in the ground and you let the thing pull itself towards the cable while these two wands are spinning, sending water out kind of close to the sprinkler and then this guy on top is sending it out a good solid, uh, you know, 100 foot diameter. Um, so you'll see on my little setup here that this guy runs pretty well. It's got a quarter inch nozzle in it and uh, it runs much better uh, with the spring tension lessened a little bit. Uh, it looks kind of crazy with the spring turned in tight, and I'll go ahead and leave that footage in so you can see it. And uh, I, I just think it's neat. I, I think they're cool-looking sprinklers. 
um, they they last and last and last. Like I said, I've, I, I have a handful of these guys and, and they all work really nicely, even though, you know, I feel like it was between 55 and 60 that they stopped making any kind of dual drive. And uh, this style with like the, what looks like a frost cap on top, uh, I, I don't think they made these very far into the 1950s at all. And still the ones I get my hands on are, are just, just great, great workhorses. So that's it for me today. Um, I want to remind you to check out the playlist of other content creators who have videos out that I like. And uh, if you think the video is worthy of it, please go ahead and, and press uh, the like button because that'll cause uh, YouTube to show it to some more folks so other people can learn the history of these things. And as always, I really appreciate that you watch. Thank you.